guess this is a night that we'll all remember for quite a while. We've lost the North Hangar and two planes. That's about a half a million dollars of our government's property. Last night, our field was well guarded. It couldn't have been sabotage that started a fire in the hangar, but it was sabotage by the mechanic who left his oily rags in that B-17. O'Neill, let's hear that definition of spontaneous combustion. Spontaneous combustion is a fire that starts by itself, owing to a chemical reaction which generates enough heat to ignite inflammable material. Mm -hmm. Harris, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes, sir. To prevent spontaneous combustion, oily rags and waste and trash are to be placed in a covered metal receptacle. It should be emptied at least once a day and always before closing the hangar. Around aircraft, there's always the danger of fire. Let's see why. We'll take up the worst offender first, gasoline. Seems pretty harmless, doesn't it? That's because its danger is invisible. Gasoline is a volatile fluid. It gives off vapors which you can't see with the naked eye, but they show up in this shadow graph. They're heavier than air, so they'll spill over the edge of your container and they'll trail along the floor if air currents are present. Here's a simple illustration of why they're so dangerous. This cloth is saturated with gasoline. The vapors travel down the trough, and when they reach the candle, they're ignited and flash back to the cloth, which starts to burn. These vapors will do the same thing 30 or 40 feet away, and you don't have to have a flame to ignite them. A spark so small that you can't see it is enough. Show you what I mean. Pyromaniacs, please note. This fellow should be using a cleaning solvent. Instead, he's using gasoline as a cleaning fluid and in an open container. What's the result? Vapors, highly inflammable, just waiting for trouble to happen. Now meet real careful Tommy Madden. Notice his light. It's the specified safety vapor-proof kind. In case the light drops, the bulb might break, but the vapor-proof hood will keep the sparks away from thing that could start a fire. The light cord wasn't long enough, so careful Tommy plugged in an extension. He made sure the cord was in good condition, too. Here's his connection. Seems to be all right, but is it? Madden was careful, sure, but not careful enough to safety a connection so that it couldn't come loose and spark. So be careful of sparks, men. Don't use equipment like this during cleaning operations or to repair aircraft unless you've made sure there aren't any leaks in the fueling system. There's an excuse for losing a plane in battle, but there's no excuse for losing a plane or a man in a hangar thousands of miles away from the front. Each loss is at a victory for the enemy just the same as if he shot down one of our flyers. And whose side are you on? Keep up your end and stay alert. Static electricity is another invisible fire hazard, especially when you're servicing aircraft. Take this B-25. It's full of static electricity generated by the friction of the air rubbing against the surfaces of the wings. You've got static electricity in the truck, too. The friction of tires against the ground and the slosh of gas in the tank. And it'll be generated in the hose as soon as the gas starts flowing through it. So before you open your tank, ground the airplane with the wire attached to the nozzle of your fueling hose, which discharges the static electricity harmlessly. Otherwise, you might cause a spark between the hose nozzle and the open gas tank. And that would be all, brother. Another common cause of fire is the starting of engines, unless you know what you're doing. How many things do you see that are wrong in this scene?
Let's see what would have prevented this. First, you never start engines where overflowing gas has spilled on the ground. The plane should be moved a safe distance away. Somebody's missing. Where's the man standing by with the fire extinguisher? If you don't mind, to the side and the rear, where you can get at a fire, if we have one. Do you remember what you did when the engine wouldn't start? Worked the primer, sir, to get more gas in the cylinders. Well, you weren't. You were just flooding the induction system with raw gas. Before starting the engine, the prop should have been pulled through with the throttle open to get rid of that dangerous flooding. Incidentally, make sure your ignition switches are off before a prop is pulled through. All right, here we go. Hold it. Don't turn that engine off. That fire is due to over-priming. Keep your engine going, and you'll blow it out. You'll save planes and lives. Now, a 10-hour lecture couldn't cover all the conditions that give rise to fires, but these do's and don'ts, plus staying alert, will cover most of them. Don't drive gasoline trucks into the hangar. Regulations forbid it. Make sure your hangar has plenty of ventilation. A stuffy hangar is an invitation for inflammable vapors to concentrate where a spark will ignite them. Ground your airplanes. Static electricity can be generated in a plane at rest, even in a hangar. Check fire extinguishers to make sure they are properly serviced. Don't use woolen rags for cleaning. Rubbing a woolen rag generates static electricity and a spark which can ignite gasoline. Never store paints, dopes, or related materials in the hangar. Never wash fatigues in gasoline, either in the hangar or outside the hangar. Hey, they've got drums outside for that stuff, Ziggy. I'm only putting it down the drain. What's going to catch on fire, the water? dispose of waste gasoline down water drains. What our friend Ziggy doesn't realize is that gasoline will float on water, won't mix with it. At the same moment Ziggy disposed of his waste gas, this innocent bystander was smoking near another outlet of the water drain. Fire isn't the only cause of casualties to men and equipment. Accidents take almost as great a toll as the guns of the enemy. And the tragedy is that no accident has to happen. Let me give you a few safety hints. Don't get too close to the prop on a hot engine. Whether the switch is on or off, might turn over by herself. It has happened. And don't run up engines without using chocks. In pulling chocks, use common sense. If the plane's weight is on the chock and it won't pull, and you're delaying the mission, well, just delay it long enough to ask the pilot to gun the engine. He'll do it. Your plane will start the chock, pull back, won't have any trouble. For a few seconds delay, you've saved a sprained back, if not worse. Don't be reckless taxiing or towing aircraft. If you're not sure of your clearance, don't guess. Make sure. See to it your TO files are easy to get at. And get the habit of consulting them. They should be your Bible. Don't ignore warning signs and signals. They're there for your safety. Don't be proud. Use chain hoists and jacks. No matter how strong you are, a machine does it better. But if you have to lift anything, bend your knees. It'll prevent strains and ruptures. Don't use compressed air to blow dust off your hands and clothes. Air blown into a minor cut on your skin may kill you. 
Now, I know that sometimes accidents happen to you when you're just the innocent bystander. But those accidents are caused mostly by a few different types of men. Now, these types must be spotted and stopped before they make trouble for you. A good example of one of these characters is the practical joker. Here he is in person. And as usual, his audience is in stitches. He's always clowning, anything for a laugh. Doesn't seem very dangerous, does he? Hey, get this. Hey, Watson, catch! This man is dangerous to you. Don't laugh at his jokes or encourage him. Nail him. Here's another bird to nail before he gets you in trouble. The reckless type who will do anything, no matter how dangerous. Likes the hard way. Thinks he's a hell of a fella, too. His crew chief's about to have them install this engine. But first, this chain's got to go up there. That's 16 feet up, and the chain weighs about 150 pounds. Okay, Jones, Hendricks can go on after our crew stand in some rope. Wait a minute, Jim. Why waste all that time? I can climb up in the hoist and you guys hand up the chain. No, it's too heavy. Are you kidding? I thought this was the army, not a girl's school. The stand, fellas. Listen, I've done this lots of times. Look, I'm practically up already. Just hand it up and I'll get it set while you're stewing around, making up your mind. Too bad, mister. But you shouldn't have listened to him. The moral is simple. Don't let the reckless boys run the show. Save them for a really dangerous job and then see how quickly they'll volunteer. Nine times out of ten, you won't even be able to find them. I want to tell you about another menace. A careless mechanic. Look at him, working hard. He means well, but that won't help the fellow he's going to present with a broken hip. He's only going over to Tech Supply for a new part, so he figures it's perfectly okay to leave his tools lying around. How could any trouble be caused in the short time he'll be gone? That was Monday's good deed. On Tuesday, our careless wonder is ambling along with this crew chief stand. Doesn't seem to be any trouble he could get into this way, does there? A few words with Joe Gooch here. Very neighborly. Picked a nice spot for it too, didn't they? Good work, men. There's many a Jap general who doesn't do as much damage in a month. The thing to remember is use your common sense. Watch where you're going and pay attention to business. Don't be like Joe Busybody. He's got itching fingers. Has to tamper with something. He's not supposed to do this. One of the first rules of safety is do not handle controls unless you know what you're doing. Look at him. Jimmy Doolittle, taking off from a carrier. Now he's dogfighting a Messerschmitt over Germany. There goes the world record for outside loops. What a flyer. Sure knows his stuff. But this is something he doesn't know. his lesson. It's a pretty expensive way to learn. 
There are two ways of handling these types we've been discussing. Teach them new habits or get rid of them. We have no place for them around airplanes. Well, that's the little piece I wanted to speak. We got a lot of good men and a lot of good planes. Let's see that nothing happens to them before they get where they'll do the most good. And one last word. Don't think the other guy will have the accident. Because you are the other guy. Thank you.